Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. Today we're going to be checking out all three of these epic uh, zeta infinite sums. Now the Riemann zeta function is really interesting because um, it's defined by an infinite sum first of all and second of all the the function that's inside that infinite sum is actually very simple and easy to work with. And so that makes it very easy for us to um, manipulate it and in, and uh, fit it into problems in many different ways. So this first problem, uh, this video, first of all, is inspired by Maths 505's recent video. Um, I'll put that on the screen right here. Definitely go check that out. Uh, this first problem is actually from his video. We're just going to be using a different method to evaluate it. And then we're going to use that method to solve the other two sums. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the video. So for most of this video, we're going to be interchanging the order of summation a lot. And so that's something that generally needs a little bit of justification to do since these are all infinite sums, right? However, we're going to just be assuming that they work and we can then check them numerically to make sure that it does work, especially because it's pretty easy to see that all of these series will converge. So the first one, we're going to just directly substitute in the definition of the Riemann zeta function. Now let's Remember that zeta of s is equal to the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the s. So if we go ahead and substitute that directly in, the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of the sum, now we have to use a different letter, let's use k. k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k to the n. Next, what we're going to do is since we're subtracting 1 on the top here, we can just write this as the sum from k equals 2 to infinity and just remove that minus 1. Because if you see that, look at the first term when k equals 1, that's just going to be 1 over 1 to the n, which is just 1, and so subtracting that is the same thing. So now if we reorganize our sum and, we'll get the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of the sum from k equals 2 to infinity of 1 over n k to the n. And so what we're able to do here is exchange the order of summations because the sum is going to end up converging either way. So instead of the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of the sum from k equals 2 to the infinity, we're going to end up with a sum from k equals 2 to the infinity of the sum from n equals 2 to the infinity. And that's important because you'll see, uh, you'll see why in a moment. So we're going to get the sum from n equals 2 to infinity or sorry, we're putting k in the in the front, of the sum from n equals 2 to infinity. Now, uh, I probably should put parentheses here, but I feel like it's pretty clear already, of 1 over n, um, and we'll just write this as 1 over k to the n. And so now we're going to go ahead and just evaluate this original sum. So the first, so uh, in order to evaluate this sum, we'll just use the uh, classic geometric series, integrate both sides, and we're going to get the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 is negative ln 1 minus x, and the plus c um, here is going to end up being 0 anyway. And so if we go ahead and substitute in and so, as you can see, if we just shift the index right here from n equals 1 to infinity, we end up with pretty much the same sum that we have right here. The thing is that this one starts at 2 and the other one starts at 1. So, in order to fix that, we're going to go ahead and write sum from k equals 2 to infinity of negative ln 1 minus, and then our x in this case is 1 over k. And then we're just going to subtract what the first term would be. So the first term would just be x, which in this case is uh, 1 over k. So minus 1 over k. All right. And now I can remove these parentheses, I think, and simplify the inside of this right here. We're going to end up with k minus 1 over k. So we're going to end up with the sum from k equals 2 to infinity of ln k minus ln k minus 1 minus 1 over k. Now let's look at the partial sums. So s m, 
I'll just use m because we already used n and k, of this sum. First off, let's only look at these first two terms, and then we'll look at this last term over here separately. So for this first one, sm, since this is a telescoping series, each term subtracts the last term. So for example, if we plug in the first term, that's going to be k equals 2. We're going to end up with ln2 minus ln1, which is 0. So we just have ln2. If we plug in k equals 3, we're going to be adding ln3 and then subtracting ln2. And so that ln2 is going to end up canceling. And if we continue on like this, it's just going to keep on canceling up, up until we realize that sm, meaning the sum from k equals 2 to m of all that stuff, is actually just equal to ln m. And for this second part, sm is pretty simple because it's just going to be the harmonic series up to that point. So we can write h sub k is equal to the sum from n equals 1 to k of 1 over n. And so in this case, um, for our second sum, sm equals negative hm. But as you can see, we're actually missing that first term because we start at k equals 2. Sorry, that's kind of a nasty k. Since we start at k equals 2, we're missing that first term, so we'll, let's add back a 1. And so if I go ahead and make some more space. So overall, our sum is just um, the sum of these two different sums. Oh my god. So overall, our series is just the sum of these two uh, sums. I guess there's no better way to put it. Uh, that's a bit of a mouthful. And so we we just need to take the limit for both of these. So s is going to, that's the, the total sum, which is our answer. It's sm1 plus sm2 um, equals the limit as m goes to infinity of negative h of m minus ln m plus 1. And this is just famously the definition of gamma, or the euler mascheroni constant. And so overall, our sum is 1 minus gamma. So that was a little bit of a convoluted approach to us. But if you're familiar with the interchanging of sums and also of the definition of the euler mascheroni constant, this would be uh, relatively easy for you to do pretty quickly. And as you'll see, the other series that we're going to take on in this video are going to be even easier. So the next series that we're going to do is the sum from n equals 2 to infinity. We're always going to be starting at 2 here, just because uh, zeta of 1 diverges completely. So of negative 1 to the n, zeta, to the, zeta of n over n, and this is going to be pretty much the same ordeal, except this time we're going to have an alternating series. So let's go ahead and express this in terms of... Now this time, instead of having the sum from k equals 2 to infinity, we're going to have k equals 1 to infinity because we're not subtracting out that first term. And if we go ahead and reorganize this, let's go ahead and combine this negative 1 and 1 over k to just make negative 1 over k all over n. Then we'll go ahead and exchange the summation. And this is almost exactly the same series as before. We just have that negative sign. So we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to have 1 plus 1 over k rather than 1 minus 1 over k. Yeah, so we just need to remember to add back that first term because we're starting at n equals 2 rather than n equals 1. And so we're going to end up with, just with simplifying the inside here and then expanding it, we're going to do the same exact thing we did before, and this is going to be sm1, and this is going to be sm2. And just really quickly looking at this telescoping series, we can see that clearly sm1 is going to be negative ln k plus 1, and sm2 is just going to be h sub m. And we can write this as h m also. And uh, the reason that this was so much easier is because we're starting at k equals 1 instead of k equals 2 this time, because our zeta function isn't being subtracted by 1, and so that just makes it a lot simpler. So overall, our sum is going to be the limit as m goes to infinity of h sub m minus ln m plus 1. And this is a little bit different than what we're used to for gamma, but since ln m plus 1 and ln m are actually like almost exactly the same value, 
Well, they are pretty much exactly the same value as you take m to infinity. This is going to end up being the same thing as if this were ln m. But let's go ahead and prove that real quick. It's going to be plus ln m minus ln m plus 1. So this first bit is just gamma. And then the second bit, if we go ahead and combine the natural logarithms, is going to be m over m plus 1. And as m goes to infinity, this just becomes ln 1, which is 0. So overall, the answer to this one is just gamma. All right, let's go ahead and check out our last integral, or our last, <laughs> I'm so used to doing integrals, um, our last uh, sum for today. This is one that I think is uh, pretty cool because uh, once you understand it, you can see that you can actually expand it to a lot of other integrals that are really easy to solve, or a lot of other sums that are really easy to solve. So let's go ahead and look at it. It's the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of n times zeta of n minus 1. We're going to go ahead and do the thing, same thing we've been doing the whole time. Sum from n equals 2 to infinity, the sum from k equals 2 to infinity. I'm starting at k equals 2 because we're subtracting out that first term in the zeta series. And we're just going to have 1 over k to the n. Now I'm just going to go ahead and remind us of a formula that I proved in past videos, which is that the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of n x to the n is x over 1 minus x squared. And we can also write this as 1 to infinity because that first term is 0 anyway. And the way to prove this is to just take the geometric series, differentiate both sides with respect to x, and then multiply by x on both sides. So when we switch the order of, inter of summation, which we'll, I'll just change the letters right here because we have the same bounds. This is just the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of n times 1 over k to the n. And so it's essentially the same thing as this, except we're subtracting out the first term. So that means we're going to have the sum from k equals 2 to infinity of, in this case, x is just 1 over k. And then we need to remember to subtract that first term. So when n equals 1, it's just 1 over k. So we can just subtract 1 over k. All right, now let's go ahead and simplify this. So we're going to end up with the sum from k equals 2 to infinity. We're going to multiply by k squared on the top and bottom um, of this little, of this first term. So we're going to end up with k over k minus 1 squared minus 1 over k. And actually, I'm going to move this over here so that we can make some simplifications. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 1 and then add 1 right here. And so what we're going to end up having is the sum from k equals 2 to infinity of 1 over k minus 1. Then I'll bring the negative 1 over k right here plus 1 over k minus 1 squared. Now this first part of the series is clearly telescoping, so if we, let's just go ahead and write out the first few terms. We're going to have 1 minus 1 half plus 1 half minus 1 third plus 1 third minus 1 fourth. And as you can see, all of these are just going to cancel. And in the limit, it's going to be 1 over n, or 1 over k, and that's just going to go to 0. So overall, this first part just evaluates to 1. And the second part, as you can see, it's just a sort of shifted zeta of 2. And so if we plug in k equals 2, we can see that the first term is 1, and then we have 1 fourth, and we have 1 ninth. And overall, it's just going to be zeta of 2, which is pi squared over 6. All right, that's the last sum that we will be doing in this video. But there is one thing that I want to note, and that uh, that is that uh, with enough work, you can actually find the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of p of n times zeta of n minus 1, where p of x is a polynomial. And you can actually calculate the exact value just by using this series. And then if you differentiate that one again, you can get another series. And so essentially, um, using the geometric series and repeatedly differentiating it allows you to get an expression for that sum. And then you can just kind of mess with the terms, switch the order of summation, and you can actually find out the exact value of um, 
any sum from n equals 2 to infinity of p of n times zeta of n minus 1, and I just thought that was pretty interesting. So uh, this video, we just kind of played with the cool trick, which is switching the order of summation, which is really, really helpful because it allows us to evaluate one sum, which is a little bit easier, while treating the other sums variable as a constant. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the methods, uh, the different methods I brought to the table for solving this problem. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.